Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 243, recorded Monday, March 28th, 2016. Learn to program with Minecraft. Triangulation is brought to you by Carbonite. Keep your business safe this year. Protect files on your computer or server with automatic cloud backup from Carbonite. Try it for free without a credit card at Carbonite.com today. Don't forget to use the offer code Triangulation to get two free bonus months when you decide to buy. And by DigitalOcean, simple and fast cloud hosting built for developers. Deploy an SSD cloud server in 55 seconds. Try it today for free. Visit DigitalOcean.com. And once you sign up, be sure to enter the promo code Triangulation in the billing section to get your $10 credit. And by Automatic, the connected car company that improves your driving and integrates your car into your digital life. For more information, visit Automatic.com slash twit and enter the code TWIT to get 20% off your purchase. It's time for Triangulation, the show where we talk about uh, technology with some of the smartest minds in the business. And uh, I always learn a thing or two, and today we're going to learn Python. How fun is that? Joining me uh, right now, and I actually really wanted to get uh, Craig on, is uh, Craig Richardson. He's the author of Learn to Program with Minecraft, Transform Your World with the Power of Python. Craig, thanks for joining us today on Triangulation. Hey, thanks for having us on. I leapt on this book as soon as I saw it. I'm a big fan of your publisher, the No Starch Press, and I bought it immediately because I, I love the idea. First of all, I love Minecraft, and but more importantly, so do kids. Python is in a superb uh, beginner uh, language, learning language, uh, for a number of reasons, which we'll get to. But also uh, the idea of combining the two, woo woo, how exciting. Um, if you have a Raspberry Pi, this is this is something you can just do right out of the box, right? Yep, yep. Comes uh, uh, Python, uh, the API for Minecraft, comes pre-installed on all Raspberry Pis at the minute. And, micro uh, and Microsoft very kindly has allowed them to also install a special version of Minecraft on your Raspberry Pi. So uh, you boot up into Raspbian, and uh, you already got a Minecraft server you can run locally or uh, online. I think I feel like. Parents, watch this show closely because if you have a, a kid anywhere from maybe 10 to 15, and of course they already know Minecraft, they may play it obsessively, uh, and they're probably begging you, please can I have a computer in my room? Here's what you do. You go out, you buy a $35 Raspberry Pi, you take an old mouse and keyboard, some old TV lying around, as long as it has an HDMI interface, and you say, sure kid, here. You put that in the room, you get them playing Minecraft, and then this book shows up somewhere, you know? The Easter Bunny hides it under a pillow or something. And they go, oh, what's this? And pretty, pretty soon you got a uh, young Bill Gates in your, <laughs> in your house. So Craig, tell me a little bit about your background. Are, are, are you an educator? Is that, is that where you came from? Um, well, actually I'm a software developer at the minute. Uh, a few years back, I was a computing teacher working in East London. Uh, so I taught uh, compute the kids back then. Uh, since then, I've uh, run workshops to teach programming to several hundred people. Um, I've also briefly worked for the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and of course, uh, most recently, I've released the book Learn to Program with Minecraft. It's just a it's just a wonderful book. Lots of colorful illustrations, and the reason I like it, it, it I feel like both kids, my Python and Minecraft, uh, should be in kids' uh, vocabulary, right? I mean, uh, tell me why Python. So, um, Python, um, I, well, actually going back a bit, I learned Java at university. I'm so sorry. And yes. uh, it was actually, and I really like the Java language. Well, the um, truth is Java is often taught, in fact, you know, in our local high yeah, school, yeah. Uh, much as, uh, as I fought it, uh, they, 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 they introduced a, a programming class and they taught Java. Yeah. And the reason is it's very, very widely used professionally. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just very difficult for uh, people when it's their first programming language to pick up what's going on. Um, it requires you to ignore a lot of what's happening. For example, if you start, you've got to um, 
ignore that it's an object oriented language because it's quite complex to uh, explain that to a complete beginner who doesn't even necessarily understand what variables are. Uh, so jumping to Python, it's um, a very easy language to teach because you only really need to know what you're using at that particular point in time. Right. So with, for example, um, I think the first Python programming in the book is about five or six lines long. And that does quite a lot. It will teleport the uh, player in the Minecraft world to a totally different position. So Python is very easy to pick up because it's uh, so simple and it's also very expressive. It has, like Java, the advantage of being uh, available on all platforms, completely free yep. to install. Uh, unlike Python, it comes with a, uh, an IDE, and programmers will recognize that term, uh, yep. a, a, an, interfa an editor and an interface for programming. But uh, one of the virtues of Python is it has a, a REPL, a real-time interpreter, that allows you to enter a line of Python, hit return, and see what it does. This is one of the reasons I think so many yeah, yeah. people in my generation started programming with BASIC. Same things. You, you know, it came with most computers. You could type in a line, see what it did. Uh, you could write a program on, you know, on the screen and run it, and, you know, you know 10, print hello, go to 10. And, uh, and immediately get a result. But how much better if you could tie it into something that kids are already uh, in love with, which is, for many kids, my kid for sure, Minecraft. All my kids, yeah. frankly, for sure, Minecraft. Um, and then they can, instead of just go to 10, print hello, do something interesting in a world. Right? Yeah, so um, just... <laughs> I'm sorry, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I went on a monologue. I apologize. Yeah. I paused now. <laughs> so, for example, um, just, just diving in on that. Um, for example, I, I use, uh, I've done presentations where I've done live programming in front of an uh, audience of children. And using the um, Python uh, command line, you can just type a few lines of code and it'll just appear there on the screen. And you can interact with the program as... Um, as you're writing it, it's it's really cool. Like a lot of the kids, uh, you do a tiny bit of programming, and the the original like oh, I'm not quite sure what's going on here, and then it reaches a point where the faces just light up, and they're like, what 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 can I do with this? It's kind of their imagination starts going, and they go, it's they just kind of start seeing how easy it is to pick up, and the power of uh, actually mastering it once. Once you've got that, what you can actually do with it. So it's 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 really good for sparking their imaginations. Uh, we're gonna, uh, I, I, okay. So I uh, this is crazy, uh, but yeah. I have I've done it a few times. So I'm gonna uh, tr say it one more time. We're going to install the software, all of which is free, uh, so that we can actually write a program in yep. this and we're going to take a break for an ad and while we do this if you're following along and you could do this on a mac on a pc on linux i'm going to do it on a macintosh make sure that you have minecraft installed uh the regular minecraft and i would guess that most uh, most of the people most of the kids watching do <laughs> and then you're going to install python 3.5 you want to get the latest python i like that you're not using an older version you're using python uh 3.5 yep. Uh, but all of this is free and downloadable and installable. And, uh, and I'm going to take a break. And when we come back, you will have installed Minecraft. You will have it running. You will have M Python installed. And then we're going to go to the No Starch Press site and download uh, a nice zip file that has everything else you need uh, built into it. And you'll see how easy it is. And, and, and then maybe we'll write a little bit of code. And, uh, and, and, uh, and that would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Hmm. Yep. Let's see. All right. First, let's take a little break. Our guest is the author of a great, I highly recommend this, a great new book. For adults, too, by the way. Um, you may say, well, I know, I'm not interested in Minecraft, uh, but I would like to learn programming. And maybe I'd, and Python is a great way to start, whether you end up writing Java. By the way, Python's a great uh, gateway drug to Java or anything else. It's very C-like. You'll learn all the basic concepts of programming um, in a nice, easy, painless fashion. And 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 uh, it got it kind of got me into Minecraft to be honest with you. Uh, you'll you'll learn a few other side uh, tools here uh, as well. So uh, even if you're a grown up, uh, this is a great way to start. We'll talk about we'll talk more with our uh, our guest uh, Craig Richardson in just a little bit. But first, a word about backup. Uh, I don't I don't you know I had a caller on the show on the radio show on uh, I think it was on Sunday. Who? Uh, oh, it's so sad. He said, "I have a, my uh, my computer. My computer got stolen, 
And uh, it had a lot of, he said, quote, intellectual property on it. In other words, his stuff on it. And, uh, and, I, and he said, what can I do? And I said, well, do, where's your backup? He said, I don't, know. I don't have a backup. And, it's, and it, I said, there's nothing, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> there's nothing you can do. Um, you've lost it. The computer you can replace, but there's stuff on your hard drive right now, I guarantee you, that you can't replace. I had another woman call up and say, my contact list, I, my uh, Verizon migrated me to AOL and my contacts. I'm missing some contacts. What can I do? I said, well, do you have a backup? I, she said, I never backed up because I don't, have no, I don't have anything on my computer that's important. I said, is your contact list important? She said, yes. <laughs> Carbonite, my friends. Carbonite online backup couldn't be easier. And it's the kind of backup I recommend. It's automatic, so you don't have to remember to do it. It's continuous, so you change a file, boom, it's backed up. That's really important. You add a contact to your contact list, it's backed up. And finally, it's backed up not locally, which is fine. In fact, I encourage you to have a local backup, but, but to the cloud so that if the worst happens. Remember, backup's about disaster planning. Nobody wants to think about disasters, but they, they, they do happen. Uh, it's backed up securely to the Carbonite servers, so you can get to it any time on any computer. You don't, you don't even have to wait for a disaster. Log on to your Carbonite account on any computer. There's your stuff. You can download files. You can email files. They have free programs for your uh, Android and iOS devices. It, for home or office, for Mac or PC, Carbonite is an amazing backup solution. I use it all the time. And when my kids went to college, you better believe their laptops had Carbonite on it. So here's the deal. Go to Carbonite.com right now. Join one and a half million homes and small businesses who are using Carbonite. Here's a number. You want a number? I love this number. Carbonite has restored 50 billion, 50 billion with a B, files. That's 50 billion files that would have been lost forever if it had not been for Carbonite. From spreadsheets and emails to digital photos and music, you get to up to 30% off right now when you use our offer code triangulation. And of course, as always, two months free with purchase. But try it first. Carbonite.com. Just when you do the trial offer, use the offer code triangulation. And uh, and you can get up to thirty percent off and up to two and and a full two months free when you buy. You got to back it up to get it back. So do it right with Carbonite. Craig Richardson is our guest. Oh, I forgot to mention Java. Do I? I need Java for uh, for Minecraft, right? So you got Minecraft. Yeah. If you install Minecraft and it's running, you've got Java running. And uh, you need yeah. Python, which is free from Python.org. If by the way, none of this is necessary if you have Raspberry Pi which is nice. Uh, Microsoft very kindly uh, provided it. So I have also downloaded the nice little zip file that you provide. Is there anything else? What else do I need to do? So you've got the zip file that includes the sit local server, which is run on the computer. Yep. Um, and we need Python. Um, yep. Java, which is used to run the server, Minecraft, and... I think that's it. I think the zip file, which you download from the Starch Press website, um, also includes an installer for everything that Python needs it does. as well. It's a, a little shell script. Should I should I run that shell script? Yep. All right. Let's run the shell script. Install API command. That's this is the uh, this is the uh, little plugin that runs in the um, a Minecraft server that gives, and this is so sweet, that gives Minecraft uh, an API for Python. Which is totally amazing, right? So let me run it. It's going to open a terminal. I'm going to give it my uh, password here because uh, I have to run it as root. It's running all of that. And now it's completed. Okay. Now what do I do? I've got my API. So that's the API installed. Yep. Uh, now if you click on start server. Okay. We're going to start a little server. I'm going to open my terminal. Start server. Another little shell script. We'll open this one and run it. And yep. uh, now it's loading crossed. everything, and fingers crossed because you, there are some dependencies. Sort of there we go. We've got a Minecraft server running now. So this yep. is running locally, uh, yep. and it's a world. It's a full world uh, of, with Minecraft. So if I ran Minecraft right now, I could go to localhost, and I'd be in there, right? Yep. Uh, in fact, let's do that real quickly just to show that we actually uh, have our own little world that we've created. I'm going to launch my Minecraft. Um, and I can't remember. Oh, I hope I didn't think about this. I hope it's Minecraft 1.9, is it? Mm, let's see. We may have we may have a conflict. I might have to run Minecraft in earlier. It's quite easy to change if, yeah. if necessary. Uh, let's see. We want to create add server. We're going to say localhost, right? That's all I need to do? Okay. You can show this. 
there's nothing nothing to hide here localhost done and there it is a minecraft server that's me we're gonna log into my minecraft server and there i am i'm now in a world Excellent. we just created this world ladies and gentlemen that's the beauty by the way the wonderful thing about minecraft is this is a world now that is all my own, right? There's no one else in here. I I can explore the whole world. There might be some mobs at night. We want yep. we want to build a shelter pretty quickly, but I'll tell you what. Well, let's go into creative. Should I go into creative mode? Yeah, I think you're already in creative mode. Oh, if okay. You double tap the space bar. I think you should be able to fly. Oh, I love doing that. Let's get out of this here. Escape. Oh yeah, I'm flying. Yeah, there we go. yeah let's go back to Earth. <laughs> so we we don't have to worry about bad guys or zombies. That yep. thing in front of me, if you've never played Minecraft, that's my hand. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, so I, in fact, let's, um, let's take a look at, uh, how do I get to look at me? I prefix function a five and there I am. And I have an unusual skin because I am an unusual person, but there I am little Steve in my Minecraft world and I'm wandering around now, now that we're doing that, can I do something in my Minecraft world with Python? Yep, so if you open up Python 3.5. All right, and we're going to do that from the terminal in this case. All of this is very well explained in the book. You don't have to be a terminal guru to do this. Should I do idle, or what should I do? Um, oh, actually, you know what? I think I have idle in my... I think this puts idle in my applications, I believe. Yeah, I think idle is probably the best solution for this. Yeah, so let's do this uh, Python 3.5 and run idle, which is the Python, as I mentioned, I-D-E. And now we're, we're actually uh, running Python. Um, and uh, I can open a new uh, file so I can edit some Python code. Or I can be in the interpreter and I can just write 2 plus 2 and hit return and it'll enter 4. So we're running, this is, this on the left, this window on the left is a Python shell. It's actually just, you can run Python commands from there, right? Yep. Uh, should I write some code? What do you think? Yeah, uh, do you want to try one of the exercises out? Yeah, yeah. Um, something simple. Just do you want to try the teleport one first? Yeah, let's teleport cool. around, it's, okay? It's like the equivalent of Hello World. It is, so, it's awesome. Uh, so I should have... page 35 if you've got that. Yeah, got I'll, I'll open up page 35. By the way, Craig told me, do not do this. But I think it's, <laughs> it's kind of cool to see that you can do it. So the first thing we're going to do is import the Minecraft API command. Yep. So from MCPI, and we're using the Pi, uh, Minecraft, PyCraft, I guess they call it, Minecraft uh, API. So that's great. If you've, if you've got a Pi, this, this will all be ready to go out of the box for you. And I'm going to import Minecraft. This is all Python code, which means I'm importing uh, utilities from this Minecraft library so that I can use some Minecraft commands. Now I'm going to create a new... MC, what is that? Uh, so that's pretty much just creating a connection to the game. So you've imported all the instructions from uh, from the Python library, and now you're just making a connection to your game. All right. So actually, you know what? Let me uh, let me uh, make this uh, bigger a little bit here in preferences, because I think it's probably hard for you to read. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger uh, uh, font here. I get 20. 20 point font. Can you read that? Let's see. Oh, I guess I have to open the window. Well, you can zoom in, right? Zoom in. We have the command. Now, there you go. So, the first yeah. thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a position in the world. Where should I go? Let's make my x coordinate 10. My y coordinate is 110. X is so there's so your position on the Minecraft plane is determined by x, y, and z coordinates, right? Yep. So what's the x? Is that my... So x is flat plane. So that's where uh, I... y is that... vertical. y is how uh, high I am. the other direction and, and, of the flat and, plane. Okay. So it's a, as you, you know, as... This, by the way, kids are going to... You know, they learn this in, in eighth grade. They learn, you know, graphing. Well, now they're going to learn it directly through experience, which I think is awesome. So we've just read, entered in some random coordinates. Now, yep. MC is our Minecraft instance. We're going to say MC.player. That's me. Yep. And then we're going to use a Minecraft command, set tile position. Easy enough, right? And w since we've already given an X, Y, Z coordinates, we'll just use those variables. So by doing this, notice, incidentally, 
couple of things. First of all, I love it that Idle is already helping me by syntax highlighting and completion. So that makes it easier to see if you've done something wrong. We've also uh, already learned variables. We've, we've learned how to invoke you know, Minecraft, how to create a Minecraft instance and, a, and, and to talk to it. And if I run this, is this something magical going to happen to my Steve? So if you look in the Minecraft window at the minute, see whereabouts you are, and then when yeah. after you run it, you should you should teleport so to that let's position. See. Steve is next to a nice sheep. There's a couple of chickens. A couple of chickens. Uh, I'm just standing there in my little Minecraft world. Now, how yep. do I run this? I go to run. And then run module. Module, or F5. If we change back to... Okay, so you've got to save I'm it I'm saving first, it. Yep. We'll just save it. My first program. And it's going to run. Oh, and if you look in the background, in the Minecraft game... Oh, where did I... I teleported to, what to the a different what? position. What the... I, where'd my sheep... I'm in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, isn't it? And uh, now a kid who's played Minecraft is immediately going to grok. Oh, I just teleported to another place. By the way, the next thing they'll do is they'll change the exposi exposition. Let's do that real quickly. To somewhat a little bit higher. Let me make it a thousand. That will put me in the air, right? No, so it's the Y position. The y position. Yeah. All right, let's let's go to. No, I'm sorry, not 110. That's the ground. If that's, I did if I did five, I'd be in bedrock. But let's do yeah. 1,100. We're gonna save that. And now let's let's run this and see where my little Steve ends up. Ah! I'm I'm in the air and I'm and I'm. Where am I? I'm falling. And by the way, this is a lot of fun. Fortunately, we're in creative mode. I'm not going to die, but I am falling. And oh no! Yeah, whoa! Oh, there we go. Go. Oh, boom! Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to calm down now. So you get the idea. I mean, that was not hard. You may at this point wander off and let uh, let little Sally figure out more. Because there's a lot more you can do, including uh, building rainbows, watermelon uh, tunnels in whole homes programmatically. And by the end of the book, uh, you've learned all sorts of useful Python commands. And you've built things like houses and castles and pyramids. Here's a cube. Here's a two-dimensional loop. That is so awesome. Is there anywhere, do you know, are, this just came out. Who's using this? Anybody using this yet? Uh, so it's, quite, it's sold quite a lot in the last um, few months. I think it came out in mid-December in uh, the US and it came out in mid-January in the UK. Um, it's outstanding. There's like the, the amount of feedback I've received Fantastic. on it. And it's, uh, it's kind of overwhelming how positive it is as well. Um, when I was writing it, I was... Uh, I mean, I kind of expected it would do quite well, but I never really expected it to do this well. I'm so um, happy. And also, also, like, all of the kind of worries about will people understand this? Is this really the right level for kids? It's just kind of like it's the feedback just kind of makes all those doubts go away. And, like, I've had people contact me saying um, my son's tried loads of different things to try and learn programming in the past. And this is the first one that sticks. This is the first one where he's been able to do it himself. Uh, or there's been um, teachers contact me saying they can just leave their students alone with the book. Exactly. And, uh, even young girls and stuff will just get on with it and just kind of just really, really get into it. Well, what I so like really about positive. it... I'm really happy with that. Yeah, what I like about it is that... Um uh, kids um, love Minecraft, and so the the best way to teach something is to is to get them to do something they love, right? Yeah. And yeah, because they love Minecraft so much, it doesn't take much, not barely a nudge to say, you know, you could write programs that would do things in Minecraft um, beyond just the simple, you know, commands that you, you know, the op commands and things that you already know. I mean. Imagine uh, running a program and suddenly there's a multicolored rainbow made out of watermelons yeah, yeah. <laughs> in front of you. It's it's amazing. It's so so uh, cool. Uh, what I'd love to see, and um, and you know, I was even thinking of doing this, is it would be really fun for us to uh, to kind of do just a little series of lessons, just like what I just did. I mean, we'd have to do more detail about setting it up, but. 
just like what we just did, and just kind of walking, walking through this. I'd like to invite you to join us at some point to do this. You haven't made videos yet, have you? No, I haven't made videos for this yet. Yeah. No. Um, it just it just begs to be uh, to be done. Let's let's talk a little. Now, you're a professional programmer at this point. Are you still writing in Python? What are, or are you doing Java? Or what are you doing? Uh, so I actually do. Um, so I work for a. Uh, a small company in Cambridge uh, that works primarily with um, Salesforce. Uh, so I'm using a language which is similar to ah. similar to Java. Um, also, in my spare time, I do a bit of uh, Python development. I also do a bit of Android development. Um, so yeah, it's uh, just lots of different languages and uh, Python. I mean, the reason people like Python is just it's it kind of makes programming fun again. It is, and you get an instant feedback. I mean, even in just the Python. Uh, IDE or the the REPL just to be able to a REPL stands for what is it read evaluate print loop so uh, that's what this is in the Python shell it's 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 reading my you know twenty times or plus uh, ten it's reading this it's evaluating it it's printing the result 30 and then it's looping back again and letting me do another command and I think that I think this is kind of the number one thing a, a learning language needs so that people can experiment in it right can try and try a statement and see uh, see what happens what other kinds of things so we, we basically just ran through the beginnings of uh, chapter one and yeah yeah and chapter one's gonna continue uh, with playing with teleportation including things like get your current position and then move you over an inch, things like that. Um, what do we? What What do you learn in this book? How much Python am I going to learn if I go through this? Book? So, um, I mean, when I started writing the books, the, the primary uh, primary objective was um, to teach uh, the fundamentals of programming. So the idea wasn't just to go, "Hey, here's a really cool thing you can do in Minecraft." It was to go, "What am I actually teaching first? And then what can I do? What's cool in Minecraft? That, for example." Um, I teach if statements, I teach loops. Um, there's quite a cool uh, program which creates a trail of flowers, which <laughs> pretty much it's, it teaches a loop, so it will repeat a set of instructions. And then the reader uses that to create a trail of flowers as they walk around the world behind them. Um, I've shown that to kids in the past, and they just, they just like the excitement on their faces um, when they realize they can change the flowers f from flowers to TNT blocks. <laughs> so TNT Inevitably, like right? They say, "Well, yeah, yeah. flowers are nice, but wouldn't it be nice if it blew up behind me?" <laughs> yeah, and uh, so you can see them just like go, "Oh, let's just blow everything up," and it it absolutely destroys the world. But it's it's just so much fun. It's just it just it's just a way to go from. Uh, Books, some of the books which can be quite dry for uh, beginners yes. will teach things like Fibonacci sequence or they'll do something like FizzBuzz, which are just too generic um, things which seem to be in every program book. Whereas this book, I thought the, the idea was that you can have so much fun with programming and, and using Minecraft to do that just really opens it up. Well, well um, let me, let me, let, let's, let's do a little uh, flower trail. How about, yeah. how about, because I, uh, now I am going to cheat because I have, uh, I mean, let me, unfortunately, Python wants to open in uh, Xcode, so I'm not going to do that. We'll open it in idle here. Uh, this, is the, this is the simple code for a flower trail. And you'll see it starts with the same prologue that all of the code is going to start with, which is we import the, the API. Uh, we create a Minecraft instance. We're also going to learn a little bit about Python here because we're going to import a Python uh, tool called time, which gives us uh, uh, the ability to pause for 0.2 seconds. And that's what I love about this. Incrementally, you're going, it's wonderful because you're going to get uh, this uh, slowly adding in Python stuff from this. So we're going to run this here um, and see what happens to my little Steve. Back to the game. Where am, where am I? Like oh, it's dark. It should be a flower there. Yeah, wait a minute. It's, it's dark. So uh, let's say, um, what is it? Uh, set time? Time set? I think it might be set time. Set time day. Nope. No. Oh. Set time, maybe. Huh? Day. Oh, man. I've, it's, you you got to remember these. Time, I can't remember. What is it? Help me. Uh, help me, chat room. Help me, Obi-Wan. Help me, Obi-Wan. Help time. 
No help for time. I want to set it to daytime. You see, I already have a flower in my hand. <laughs> it's uh, forward slash time set. And then, That's it. Time set um, day. There, no. Oh, I'm not. Then you need to put the uh, actual time in. So if we do. Um, I think I'm not up. 1,000, I think. So t I guess slash I could just wait till daytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, even if I just say day, it should work. But uh, 1,000. Yeah, see, I'm not an op. Uh, so I'll have to go. I have to go into my server, which I can do real quickly and op myself. This is all so very exciting for everybody, I know. Um, op. Chief. Twit. Leo. That's me. I am now opt. Now I can go back and do this. Let's do it. Time set. Daytime. We're back. Steve's there back in the actually. daytime. <laughs> now watch, watch little Steve as he wanders around because my goodness, he's dropping, he's dropping flowers, as he walks with that simple code. And you can see, yeah, kids would immediately like it. Hi, zombie. Go ahead, and burn. Uh, <laughs> so I've left flowers behind me. But what if it were dynamite? How would I change that to dynamite? So we just need to get the uh, dynamite. Uh, block ID. So and that's one of the nice things in this book you have. <laughs> by the way, I refer to it a lot in general. Well, a the back, you have it? a cheat sheet for all the different uh, IDs. Uh, yeah. and let's let's go here. Let's find some dynamite. Uh, so I think it's actually under TNT. So oh, TNT. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, it is uh, 46. Should I use hand detonated, or the... Yeah, hand detonated, and then that way you can put it by hand. So I do 46 comma 1. Yep. So let's go back into our little uh, Python code here. And the block we were leaving was 38. Show that. 38's a tulip. I don't want to do that. I want to do a 46. And then should I put comma 1? Yep, comma 1. Comma 1. That's it, huh? That's going to yep. be dynamite? Yep. Oh, the kids are going to love this one. Now, now, Steve, save the source. Now, Steve, let's go wander around. And we're going to drop little bits of dynamite? Oh, 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 Steve, Steve, Steve. He's building a dynamite fortress. This is going to be horrific. When? Do, how do I detonate it? So if you just turn around. Yeah. And just hit one of the blocks and it should. There we uh -oh. go. So that's now run, run. And you're going to set a trap. <laughs> oh, this is this is continuing to blow up because this I'm, is gonna continue I'm dropping it's dynamite the, everywhere I go. I'm gonna, until I get to bedrock. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, it's never gonna stop, is it? I love all the resources you're picking. Look at I'm getting iron. I've got uh, like oh, I'm really that's right. I'm this is a fast way to mine. <laughs> um. <laughs> It's not going to stop, is it? Is there a way to stop it from blowing up? You could try flying. So if you double tap the space bar and fly. Maybe I fly out of that uh, it, yeah. thing. Yeah. Whoa. So I'm still leaving dynamite behind me. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Get out of there. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I got a dynamite column. It's following me everywhere. <laughs> Let me land and blow another hole. Let's blow a hole in this uh, mountain. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm now getting, I'm now getting uh, distracted. But but you see, you see how much fun this is for a kid. To why are you taking it away from the blowing up stuff? This is great. This is great. Okay, should I do it again? Let's do it again. Yeah. Uh, where am I? Okay, I'm in Steve. Let me let me do a, a function F5 and get out of Steve. Okay, hit it again now, Steve. Hit it again, Steve. You ready? Oh, this is not going to be good. <laughs> okay, you can see why a kid might really uh, quite enjoy that. I have no idea where I am right now. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Dynamite. So what are we going to learn? We're gonna, now, I just learned, uh, uh, let's see, let me look at the code here. I just learned uh, some, actually, that was pretty simple stuff, wasn't it? It wasn't... Uh, yeah, so it's just, a, it's just a while loop. Um, yeah, yeah. So pretty much everything that's uh, indented a bit will repeat over and over again. So that pretty much sets the trail of, uh, at the minute, dynamite at the position of the player. Um, but I did learn, quite... I, I learned while yep. true, 
Yep. So I learn how to continually loop over and over again. And then, and then that, what you can see as, as you go would be a simple thing to uh, say, okay, well, now let's have some conditions. Like once you've blown up the world, let's stop. <laughs> 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 there's, I think I think there's a variation maybe in the book. I've I've run this uh, this variation at uh, workshops in the past, where uh, while you're walking on water, it will freeze the water and just turn it to ice. Whereas if you're walking on grass or something, it'll just do nothing because oh. um, it just uses an if statement within there. So it's just like little tiny steps, and you can have quite quite uh, powerful differences uh, between the programs. And what's great is it really encourages kids to just say, well, hmm, what if I change that? You know, for instance, what yeah, yeah. if I what if I eliminate the sleep command? What happens? And of course, you get a lot of flowers. It goes a lot faster. <laughs> and on, uh, on some less powerful computers, it slows the computer down drastically. But, yeah, um, yeah. Which is actually, I think, in the past, I've used that as a way of teaching about uh, CPU speed and how lots and lots of commands and uh, it slows the computer down. And if you're blowing up a lot in Minecraft, it, that's that's lots of instructions which are getting to the computer. Uh, so that's why computers slow down. So it's it's, it's just. It's this great resource for learning with. Um, no kidding. No kidding. Experiment, it's really key to give uh, any kid who's learning uh, something like this a, a realm in which to experiment. And I can't think of a better realm uh, for kids than Minecraft. And you can go from there eventually to robots, you know, um, Lego Mindstorms and things like that. But I think this is a really nice way to start in a simple way. And I want to repeat what I said at the beginning. You can do this with a $35 Raspberry Pi. So I'm telling you, give your 12-year-old, say, you know, Happy Easter. Here's a Raspberry Pi, an old mouse and keyboard. You probably have a few of those lying around. Plug it into the TV and let's see what you can do. And this book would be a great way to start. We're talking to Craig Richardson. His book is called Learn to Program with Minecraft. And uh, even for grown-ups, you know what? You don't have to. <laughs> this is kind of. You saw how fun that was. This is uh, this is kind of fun. Somebody in the chat room said, "Looks." Beatmaster says, "Looks at his Lego and shakes his head in disappointment." Yeah, Lego was never this fun, was it? I love it. We're gonna take a break. Come back with more with uh, Craig Richardson in just a little bit. Actually, I w I w this is a perfect uh, one for uh, people who want to maybe take the next step and create a Minecraft server or a server of any kind, digital. Ocean. I am such a fan of DigitalOcean, and I'm not alone. DigitalOcean is growing by leaps and bounds. It's the fastest growing cloud infrastructure provider in the world because it's built for developers or anybody who wants to learn to develop. I mean, this is a great next place for you to uh, to create your you know WordPress blog. That's what Father Robert did, or your server. If you want to learn Docker, let me log into my. I like to do a demos, as you can see. I'm going to log into my DigitalOcean account and create something. 600,000 developers, including Father Robert, Randall Schwartz, uh, who does Floss Weekly, Aaron Newcomb, you know him. They all are using droplets on DigitalOcean. They're virtual private servers that can be customized and deployed and can do almost anything that you can do. Watch, I'm going to create a new droplet. This is how easy it is. And wait till you see how affordable it is, too. So I'm going to choose from the menu. These are the operating systems. Ubuntu, FreeBSD, Fedora, Debian, Core OS. So we're going, to, we're going to provision a server with Ubuntu. Choose your size. I'll choose the least expensive. It's, seven, it's 0 .007, 7 7 tenths of a cent an hour. You, you can either pay as you, you know, as you use it or just pay a monthly fee. That's going to give me a CPU of my very own, 512 megabytes. Uh, this is, these are on SSDs, so they're really fast. 20 gigabytes and a, and a, and a, gigabit, a gigabyte of store, 1,000 gigabytes of transfer a month. But it's easy to, to increase as you, you know, want to add capabilities. Now, there's other things you can do, too. I, um, I always sign in with my SSH keys, so I don't have to, you know, I can SSH to my server. Yes, you can do that. And then you can also which is really fun, choose from one-click apps. Now, this is going to blow your mind. Let's say I want to I play with Joomla or set up, I want to learn to program in Django, the Python uh, framework. You can set it up with Django on Ubuntu or set up your own Docker or Drupal installation, complete LAMP stack. You just pick what you want. You want to learn how to wiki? Install the MediaWiki software. It's ready, it's running, it's going. Own cloud, Renmind. A lot of people use it for their own cloud server. Um, you can learn Ruby on Rails. If you want to create an application, 
uh, a minimum viable product so you can get millions of dollars in venture funding. This is the way to do it. It couldn't be easier. It's completely scalable. So you start with the inexpensive $5 a month server, and then as you get you know, your million dollars in investment, boom, boom. You just spin it up, and you got more. It starts at less than a penny an hour, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you a free $10 credit. So that's going to give you your own server for free for two months. Or if you go pay as you go, that could be years, depending on how much you use it. Uh, visit DigitalOcean. This is so awesome. DigitalOcean.com and create an account. Yes, you could run a Minecraft server on this, by the way. Easy peasy. DigitalOcean.com. And once you sign up, enter the code triangulation in the billing section, and you'll get your $10 credit for free. I am always trying to learn new frameworks, React, um, Clojure. And what's really great is the ability to create these droplets as a learning environment for you and start working uh, in them. So many people, including uh, Craig's employer, uh, Salesforce, or Craig's, the company Craig works with, Salesforce, use DigitalOcean. It is, I'm not kidding, the fastest growing uh, cloud uh, infrastructure server uh, provider in the world. It's amazing. Go and create your first droplet free, digitalocean.com. Now, let me explain how this works. You're going to create an account. You're going to confirm your account. Then you go to the billing section, and you use the promo code triangulation. That'll give you ten ten dollars uh, credit. Really, really sweet. We're talking to Craig uh, Richardson. He is the creator of, or the author of, Learn. well, I'll give you a creation, creator title. He's the creator. Learn to program uh, with Minecraft. He's a software developer, Python educator. Worked for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Taught high school computing classes. They're in Cambridge, aren't they? Yep. Yep. And uh, has led workshops on Python programming uh, with Minecraft. And the, out of the workshops come this book. By the way, kudos to No Starch Press, one of my favorite computer book publishers. They do a really nice job. And in this case, you've opted to do full color uh, illustrations, which I know is expensive. Uh, but it brings us, it brings us to, oh, look at this. We just did that. We just did our bonus objective, a trail of destruction. <laughs> Yikes. That is so funny. It is so funny. So nice job on the on the production of this book. It's very easy to read. Is there a Kindle? Yeah. There's a Kindle version of this as well. I think there is a Kindle version. Um, I've got obviously the physical copy in front of yeah. me as well. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's available on Kindle. And when I bought um, this uh, from No Starch, and I don't know if this still offer is still there, but uh, I got a free digital copy of the book as well. Because I know yep. I, know I think that's standard on all of Yeah, I I know a lot of you like to. I, I like to have both. I like to have the physical copy so I can kind of read it in bed. But when I'm actually sitting at the computer, um, I, will, I will often have it on my Kindle or on my uh, tablet so that I can look down and up. And sometimes it's nice to copy and paste. So you might want to run the Kindle <laughs> app on your screen and copy and paste uh, the uh, applications in there. And, of course, all the source code is available from the No Starch uh, website. Um, what what do 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 you get into things like dictionaries and tuples and some of the more uh, esoteric? Uh, uh, yeah, so there's um, I think in the chapter on lists it teaches dictionaries. So uh, for people who don't do program dictionaries, in fact, it just uh, like a regular dictionary, you've got a word and then that references to a value. So we can use things uh, with that. For example, creating a scoreboard. So uh, I tested this out on a few of my friends. We uh, saw who can hit the most blocks within a minute. I oh, think that's I love it. So you can create a game. Where, you can create a little game within Minecraft. So it kind of, uh, it shows you how simple within like, I think it's 20 lines of code or something. Wow. You can create a little basic game. Uh, it's not it's not the most impressive game. It's not going to win any awards, but it kind of shows you with, with just, ha with such a little amount of code, you can do quite a lot. Uh, and you know, by the way, sometimes people think, oh, an interpreted language like Python, it's got to be pretty slow. Python is is pretty darn fast. It's pretty quick. I mean, yeah. it it works. It's, it can run a few thousand uh, commands a second, so you're not going to notice it uh, slowing down your computer or anything like that. I should build a pyramid and just show you how easy it is. Yeah, pyramids are very good at where, exercise. Where is the, uh, let's see, uh, is it in uh, for loops? Yeah, uh, I think it's page. Um, I'll just get my book just to reference it. <laughs> Uh, diamonds, um, duplicated magic wand, pillars. It's in the list. Pyramid. Chapter, Here it is. Yeah, it's in uh, it's in four loops. Pyramid. Py. First of all, 
What's cool about this is how simple this program is. This is just a few lines yep. of code, right? And you'll see, again, the same prologue. We're going to get that Minecraft uh, instance created MC. We're going to say our block type is sandstone. This is also yep. teaching kids good programming practice, things like uh, it, uh, abstracting things like the name, of, the kind of block so that you can quickly change that at the top of the program instead of burying it in your code, using uh, comments to explain what you're up to. And you've done a really nice uh, job of this without, over, without being didactic and saying, okay, now we have to learn how to comment and, uh, and <laughs> things like that. All right, so shall we build a pyramid? Let's let's yep. see where let's see where where we stand. Steve, poor my poor is Steve. Is he still is he still dropping t TNT as he walks? Uh, yeah, he is. We got to stop that right now. Can I stop? How do I stop? That? Yep. So if you go, just close the uh, close, close that the window. <laughs> it's yeah. it's still running. My uh, my um, let's 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 close I think that. Think it's a Python right. shell, which might be. Oh, you think it's well. in the shell? All right. Yes, yeah, in the shell. Yeah. So Control D here. Let's see if we're gonna get get. Uh, or maybe control C. I think it's control C. Yeah, control yep. C, control the exits. Okay. Whew. No more, no more dynamite for Steve. Thank goodness. Uh, let's just uh, let, let's just go somewhere where we can uh, make a nice uh, make a nice um, little pyramid, a little free space. All right, there we go. Pyramid will be good there. Now I'm going to go to the pyramid program. That this is it. So let's just quickly yep. look at it. Um, we're going to do a sandstone pyramid. It's the height is going to be ten blocks high. What is yep. this? Levels equals reversed range height. <laughs> so, this is a um, this is a quick way to kind of create a list with the different widths of the pyramid. Um, so it's um, you're going to have ten. The, the pretty much effectively you can have ten levels, and by repeating over those ten levels, you create the kind of triangular shape of the Got pyramid. Got it. Very important. Right? Um, if you didn't have the reversed um, bit in there, you find the pyramid is going to be upside down. Right. So by reversing it, it's, it's a nice little way of making the pyramid the right way around. So, so we've, we've created it, and actually I could, I could do this in the interpreter, which is one of the nice, uh, the nice things uh, you can do is I, I'm gonna, I can take this code and, and just see what would happen. I'm going to create a list called levels, and it's going to equal, let me look real quickly here, uh, I'll make height 10, so I'll do reversed, which is a Python command, right? Yeah. Uh, which reverses a sequence. In fact, this is the nice thing. Look at how this uh, IDE, this programming environment, is showing me what reversed does. It's going to iterate over values of the sequence. In this case, we're going to make the sequence be range height. And uh, because we don't have a height variable, I'm just going to do uh, 10. And uh, so... And now I'll close that out, and I'll run it. And then, um, what a print is that? Print levels. I think print might work. Let's see. Nope. Oh. I have to do print. Print. Oh, you've got. Of course, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Python three, so you have to have the brackets. Yeah. Oops. Uh, so that's uh, print I levels. Think it's like, so bracket. Bracket. I think if you do uh, list brackets levels that. Um, it's it's a, some, there's a slight difference between Python. Two I know. And I've never. I, I I'm Python three five yeah. is new to me, unfortunately. And uh, but this yeah, is good. Python, You're gonna, I'm learning Python three five. Yeah, as you go, yeah. Um, you could do something like um, for level. Um, oh well. In levels, and then you can <laughs> All right. Try Python. We'll take it. We'll take it for granted. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just I've build made the, a list that has levels. <laughs> and uh, in the levels, yeah. uh, now I'm going to go through a for a for loop, which says. Go one by one, step through the list of levels, and yep, assign each value to the value level. So we're creating a new variable called yep. level. Now, I figured out where I am by using this uh, mc.player.getTile position. That gives me an x, yep. y, and z position of where I am. So now I know where I am. And I am going to set these blocks in front of me, and I'm going to go through this loop. You get the idea. I'm building a pyramid. The Y coordinate gets incremented, so we go up, 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 up the pyramid until we get through all the levels. Shall we run it and see what happens? Let's try. Just one second. I think if this code runs, you're going to actually get trapped inside the pyramid. Uh oh. Uh, so if you just do. I better uh, get out of the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> the, just on the last line, mc dot player dot set tile position. Yeah. Um, so yep, just similar to that. I'm gonna put myself. I'm gonna put line. myself to somewhere else. Set tile position. 
Yeah. And then we just do X, Y, Z. X, comma, Y plus 15. Get, get, get a little away from that temple. Comma, Z. Dead. And then that All should, right. uh, should <laughs> change the position on top of the. Yeah. By the way, the kid would run this and say, hey, I'm in the pyramid. And yep. I think it wouldn't take too much for experimentation for you to realize, oh, I need to add this line. And that's exactly the kind of thing you want to do. All right, I'm going to run it right now. Let's go back to the game. Oh, my go. gosh, I'm on top of a giant pyramid that wasn't here before. Imagine the excitement that uh, your kid will have or you will have when you look yep. back and you say, I built that <laughs> with a few lines of code. And if you want a different uh, color of block, or so if we go back in the code, we can change the block type, but we can also change the height of the pyramid. Oh, so that's with fun. just two very small changes. So if you can change the height to maybe a uh, hundred, hundred, like uh, giant yep. pyramid? and then if you just go to the last line as well, just change that from to 15 to 105, 105, and then that should. We want to be on top of it. We don't want to be in it. Okay. Yeah. Although you know, the next thing I would want to try is, well, let's make a pyramid with a room inside, and I could. And what should our, uh, let's look up a new kind of block Let's, let's look in the back of the book to yeah, see. Yeah, what should we uh, make it out of? Uh, anybody? Actually, I was, I was um, for some reason, the only uh, block idea I can remember off the top of my head is usually melons. All so right. Make 103. 103. Uh, build a block we're going to make pyramids, a pyramid uh, of melons, ladies and gentlemen. Melons, yep. uh, and we're going to be standing on top of it when this code runs. What do you think? Should we run the code? By the way, as Cloth Cap says in the chat room, in the old days, we'd make these pyramids by hand. It would slave for hours. Now I'm just going to press F5, Can run it. Can you put it. a delay? Huh? Can you put a delay between steps? Hey, where's my pyramid? Oh, I got, a, I, got a, I got an error code here. Let's see. Let me just see. Did I, did I screw something up? Uh, by the way, oh, notice... Oh, there we go. There we go. Look back in the game. Oh, it took a little while. Yep. But now... <laughs> 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 Uh, I guess I made such a big pyramid yep. that it took a little while to run the code. So wow. try running down it, see how big the pyramid is. Is uh, it a giant pyramid? It's a giant pyramid. It is a really, really big pyramid. And there's lots of melons on it. <laughs> oh. This is so much fun. You can see that uh, now, by the way, this is this is now running on your uh, computer. You've got your own world. This will be if I exit out of this server, this stays here. That pyramid, that giant pyramid it, to the clouds is going to stay there, right? Yep. Uh, I have I have built something. Uh, I have built a marvel. Gaze on gaze on my wonders uh, and despair. Now be lay some dynamite on it and see what happens. <laughs> can, I, can I have a... Well, we'll leave this as an exercise for the uh, viewer. Blowing up the pyramid. <laughs> so what have we... What, well, we, we've learned so many things in Python just by doing that. And that's one of the things I really, I really like. And I think what you'd want to do is kind of go back into this. What is that levels list we created? And how do we create the list? And, of course, that's all in the, in the book. Um, uh, and, and we're going to talk about, I want to talk a little bit about objects in a bit. Learning to program with Minecraft. Our guest is uh, Craig Richardson. And uh, <laughs> isn't that fun? <laughs> Don't you want to buy this book? Uh, right now, go out and buy that book. Uh, we're going to take a break, though. We'll have more with Craig in a second. First, I want to talk about how I got here today in my car. But my car is not, is not any old car. It's a smart car. So is yours, or so can yours be, with this automatic Oh, this is so sweet. This is a little dongle. If your car was built in 1996 or later, it has a little port you may have never noticed under the steering wheel called the OBD2 port, or Onboard Diagnostics port. Now, you know, normally one would say, oh, yeah, that you, the, yeah that's for when you take it to the shop, and they bring that machine over, and they plug it in. But guess what? It's available to you, too, and if you add your automatic to your OBD2 port, it's very easy to do. You just plug it in and then pair it with your phone. Suddenly, you're seeing so much information about your car. Android or iOS, you get real-time performance data. In fact, I get audio alerts when I have stepped on the gas a little too much or braked a little too hard or I'm going a little too fast. All of that's configurable. They have a commute analyzer in the software that determines 
when you should leave for your destination, and how you can make your commute more efficient. I love it because every single trip I take, I know exactly, you know, I, I can see a map of the trip. I can see how much gas I used, how much it costs. It even knows how much gas costs because it knows where the nearest gas stations are. You'll never wonder when you get an alert light on your dashboard what that means because Automatic will tell you. And here's the best part. The Automatic app platform integrates with your Amazon Echo, your Nest, your Mechanic, FreshBooks, and if, if this, then that, and more. So I have an if this, then that command that says when I pull up and turn off the ignition out front of the studio, I send a tweet to my, my Twitter bot that says, Leo just arrived. I think a show's about to begin. That's automatic doing that. Great if you're keeping track of uh, mileage for business expenses. It'll tie in with Concur or Expensify or FreshBooks. It supports the Apple Watch and the Pebble Watch. And here's the nice thing. It's 99 bucks, and that's it. There's no monthly fees, no subscriptions, and Automatic never sells your data. This is your information. I can't tell you how great this is. Imagine the idea of saying to your Echo, and I do this, how much gas is left in the tank before your trip? So you know if you're going to have to fill up. You can... Have it set so that your Nest thermostat warms up the house as you're on your way home. I can, I can go on and on. Now, I said it's $99.95, but we have a special offer code that'll save you 20% at checkout. Just use the offer code TWIT. This thing is so cool. The, talk about quantified self. This is quantified car. I love it. Automatic.com slash TWIT. Very elegant. I have it, for instance, save every trip I make, I save it to an Evernote uh, notebook. Um, and that way I can keep track of where I've been and what I spent to get there. And you know what? Sometimes you learn some things. Uh, for instance, you know, if you tried to save a buck by driving to Costco, you know, to 100 miles north, uh, it cost you $5 to get there. Maybe that wasn't such a great savings. There's also an integration with some apps for teenagers that will help you. Uh, both keep track of your teenagers and help them learn how to be better drivers. You're going to love this. Automatic.com slash twit. And don't forget to use the offer code twit. Save 20%. Our guest is the author of a blocky introduction to programming. Craig Richardson's written the, uh, the greatest book ever. And I think if you've watched some of the things <laughs> we've done with Steve, you'll realize it's true. Learn to program with Minecraft. Now, one of the things Python, and it's Python programming, which I think is is actually great. I'm a I'm a huge fan of Python programming. Um, do we get into objects? Do we do, uh, in object oriented programming in here? Yep. So the very last chapter um, introduces objects. Um, that is the hardest of... thing I think for people to grasp, and yeah, yet one was, of the most important the... things for them to grasp as they get. Yeah, more it was the chapter I was kind of most worried about writing because if you, uh, it's quite an abstract concept to teach and. Um, the main aim with the book was to try and make something which is quite abstract, which is programming, right. a lot more uh, concrete and a lot easier to understand. So with the object-oriented chapter, it was something I was dreading, but the way that it's turned out in the book, I'm extremely happy. And it's, uh, I find it's actually quite an effective way to introduce quite something that's quite difficult for a lot of people to grasp. Yeah, no kidding. Um, one of the fun things we can do with this is build a ghost house. Tell me about yeah. the ghost house. So um, the idea is that you can quickly build a house using the Python. So I think in one of the other chapters, it teaches you very quickly how to build something, uh, how to build a house in Minecraft with only a few lines of code. Uh, the idea for the ghost house was just to kind of build on top of that, and it will the house will disappear after a few seconds. Um, is as a program, it's it's not too complex, but what because of the objects um, in Python, you can build upon this and uh, do several variations by reusing the code in quite clever ways. So you can build that ghost house and then you can move on to maybe building a, a ghost castle, a ghost hotel, which all have very similar, uh, very similar features, but it, with only a few small changes, uh, it kind of teaches um, objects quite well. Let me, uh, I mean, it, what's nice is this, all, all this code fits on a page, um, and you, you'll start to use things like class and, uh, you know, init, and, and it is nice because you can immediately, the, the, the uh, reader can immediately see the result of this. Now, this is the, after going through all 12 chapters, this is kind of like the, the master class in this. Um, and by the way, you don't have to have the, the house disappear. 
that that's that's the last line of code there. So you could you could uh, eliminate that if you want, and, and this would build a house. But what a great way! Should we should we run this? Why not? Let's see. Yep. So it should it should make a house appear, and then it should disappear after thirty seconds. All right. Let's uh, let's quickly well, let's quickly go to uh, Steve and see see if we have so a house. house. Oh wow! I built quite a nice house. Is that going to disappear? Let's see in uh, thirty seconds. By the way, there's my melon pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I want to build a bigger one now. That's awesome. That is awesome. Or maybe you, you could build a house in your melon pyramid, you know, and you never worry about running out of food because uh, what a great way for a kid or anybody. Forget kids. I'm going to stop saying kids. For, oh, oh, it's gone. <laughs> my house disappeared. It's a ghost house. Uh, what a great way for a kid to get an experience, a, a deep, rich, experiential sense of what coding is and what it can do in a fun environment. They can use these snippets of code in their own Minecraft gaming and building and creation. And of course, they're going to be highly incented to try other stuff. Well, I built a melon pyramid. Could I build a diamond pyramid? Uh, could I build a diamond house? Maybe I'll build a diamond house with a pyramid on top. What? And, and they start getting more and more engaged. And what a I mean, I think you've probably written the book that is going to launch a, a thousand programmers, maybe a million programmers, and uh, I think that's a great thing. We all want we all want to learn to code. We want our kids to learn to code, not because they're going to become pros, but uh, necessarily, although pretty good job these days, but because it's so important, I think, to understand how this stuff works and to have a, an experiential um, uh, understanding of what coding is and what computers are and how computers work. And this is it. Hey, I thank you so much for writing this book. What a great, what a great title. What a great book. I encourage everybody to buy it from No Starch Press. It's, of course, it's on Amazon, but if you buy it directly uh, from No Starch, uh, you can get the, uh, the the digital version of it, a Mobi file or a PDF file, uh, your choice. Uh, you can also download and look at uh, a chapter there, and even, which is nice, uh, you're give, Craig's giving away all the code. So you can set up the Minecraft server. You saw, actually, I did that quite quite simply right before the show. Just download the Minecraft tools zip file. Um, and it works on Windows, Mac, uh, Linux as well. And there's so much you can do with this. Um, highly recommend it. Craig, I just want to thank you. I, I wanted to get, as soon as I saw this book, I bought it. Um, I think pre-ordered it. Uh, got it, loved it, and I said, I told our producers, get Craig, because <laughs> I want to, I want to play with it, and I want to talk to him about it, and I think we want to do some shows around it, because I think it's such a good idea. Would would it be okay with you if we did a few chapters, uh, some shows? Yeah, yeah, um, we'll set something up. It right. should, I think it'd be quite cool because it's yeah. it'll show something quite well, visually. Well, you can see, uh, yeah, you can see how easy it is, and I think just even in this show, people seeing how simple it is to do this, uh, yeah. it, it's fun. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing um, the thing I've taken away from the, today is that uh, you've just had loads of fun with the book. And, you didn't uh, want me to do this. You said, oh, don't. <laughs> this, this, what if something goes horribly wrong? Well, that's the beauty of programming, right? What if something goes hard? We'll just comment on a line of code or <laughs> rewrite it and make it work. Look, the clouds are moving in on my pyramid. I think the top of my pyramid is actually above the cloud level. Isn't that awesome? You got to get it. Thank you, Craig. So great to talk to you. It's been great. Yeah, it's yeah, been fun. Lots of fun. Learn to program with Minecraft. Uh, I, I can't s s say any, say speak more highly of this. This is such a great idea. It's such a fun book. And I've, I've had a lot of fun uh, just playing with it at home. We do triangulation every Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. I think that comes out to be uh, 1800 UTC. If you want to watch live, be in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. It's always uh, uh, useful for me to have your reactions to see what you're saying in the chat room. Uh, and uh, if you can't, though, we have on-demand audio and video of this. We put it on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash triangulation. We also, of course, put it on our website, twit.tv slash TRI. You can download audio or video of all of our shows at the Twit website. And uh, if, if you have a podcatcher that you like on your phone or on your tablet, uh, you can use that. Or you'd like Stitcher or uh, Overcast or Pocket Cast. We like Pocket Cast a lot. Um, and then we have great at Twit apps, thanks to our fans who've written these, including five, not, not one, not two, but five Twit apps on the Apple TV, uh, which make it really fun to watch. Um, you, you can get those and subscribe to the show. You do want to see every episode of this. And if you've missed any episodes, man, you've got a whole treasure trove of interesting stuff. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Triangulation. Bye-bye.